Church, thank you for joining us on the Daily Weekend. Uh, today is our uh, last Insight Sunday with two of our artists. Um, we're very, very grateful to Louise and also to Molly, who's over there. Sorry, she was sitting over there last night. Who are going to be speaking to us today. And I'd also like to thank all of the other artists um, who are here. Thank you for your loans. Um, and welcome. Thank you to you for being here uh, with us. So today is uh, one of our Insight Sundays. This is a more informal program. Um, we are going to focus primarily on two works of art. Um, Louise's work, which is here, um, and I have to say that I think both Eric and I love this juxtaposition with Helen Penmark's work. Um, uh, I think, jokingly, Eric suggested we rehang hang the show today. Um, <laughs> oh, that's <gosh, laughs> joking. <laughs> what are you doing, Gary? <laughs> <laughs> um, and then, um, after the three, we'll talk to Laurie about her piece, and there's a few chairs upstairs. So what we're going to do is um, have, Louise is going to start off talking about the works, and then we're going to be open to questions. This will be your opportunity to look through our eyes. And so for that, I would like to thank Louise, who obviously is greatly known for her weaving and for her ceramic work. Um, and uh, so take it away. We uh, are looking forward to what we're going to see. intersection of craft and art, which is also where I like to keep myself and work within that intersection. And uh, so when, um, and I was also thrilled that you picked this piece, because it um, was in, from uh, 2020, and I, uh, it's the beginning of a process that now I'm continuing on to work, which is where I made the weavings and then made quince from the weavings. So the, uh, and what was interesting, is after the opening, many people ask me how these were made, and they and if they were cyanotyped. And it's actually just a print process. It's the actual weaving is the matrix, which I brought as show and tell. I can pass them around. So this would be the matrix for this first one, and then I would print them up and turn them into. What do you mean? I'm gonna. This is so the whole process of making these actually fits perfectly in the curatorial vision of this show because it, oh, sorry, this goes, that's just the back, so I'm not going to tell it. You just, you don't have to look at it. It just makes it interesting. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, I just lost my question. Oh, yes. So I will use all, I will explain exactly what these are because it's the way, the, the way, that I made these is the really the in between crafted art and um, making plus. So uh, when I was, I like to work with uh, sort of geometric shapes. I like I made pop holders, the square pop holders you can get for kids at the five and ten. I made the ones for kids, and then I also like to work with the brick shape. I made a cast to break a day for a year. And I also have been working with dice. So this was, this is, this is one, six feet. Would really you hard. speak a little louder? I'm sorry, you need a mic. I go like this. No, I don't need a mic. <laughs> These are the six faces of one dice. And I was weaving dice, trying to figure out how I could get the articulation, the, how I could get, um, how I could get the numbers, the variation, the sense of chance. It within the weaving that you find with dice. And I kept weaving dice on this floor loop, and it was unsatisfying. It wasn't working at all. It was, I couldn't seem to get what uh, the dynamic feeling of dice from these weavings. And uh, about 20 years ago, I met this guy, Dennis Demerman, who's an artist and a printmaker. And we have made many projects together. We've collaborated with many different materials and made lots of different stuff. So I brought my weavings, this stack of dice weavings, to her print studio, and we ink them up with this uh, with this color, and it's a blue, which made me think of a mimeograph type process. And 
A lot of them were on manila folders. These are on a Reeves BFK, which is a really hardy, hardy paper. So we wet the, we inked up these weavings, put them through a press on a wet Reeves BFK paper, which is totally, totally hardy. And so we got the embossed and all the details. Which was really fascinating for me is the way the ink reacts to the cottons and the wools. So the cottons are really articulated and it really shows every detail and the wools get kind of fuzzy. So then where the dynamism of uh, roll of a 2-3 would really work well for these types of weavings to me, not as that and work like a dice. And then I don't really have that much more, except that this process, which involves the making of the weaving, the printmaking, all these crafts that you can have incredible expertise in, and then end up making a fine art piece that could mean something else. Yes, please do. So when is it done? done. <laughs> <laughs> one of the questions that we get most often yeah. about these works in particular is if they're cyanotized. Right. Is that right. Mean intentional for the Not universe? intentional at all. Okay. It was really, it just coincidental that this thyme blue looks like the cyanotype color. Okay. Absolutely. And the cyanotype, uh, when it's a photographic process that blocks out light, so you yeah. don't get the details of this, right? You couldn't do a cyanotype with a weaving, it would just be a square. A white square on a blue background. Have you? Do you also do this in other colors? I haven't yet. I mean, yeah. This this whole I have a stack of weavings like this from that I have there that uh, we printed all in this color, and I really kept them on a vanilla older color with the uh, vanilla blue. But these happen to be. On yeah, it was just an experiment on white paper. I found white paper very hard to focus in on. Really? Why? Just because it's like this blank canvas that makes you nervous. <laughs> <laughs> and it's already a beautiful thing, the plain piece of white paper, so why would you change it? I have two questions. Oh, yes. Well, the first question is, these look very Japanese to me. Mm -hmm. To what extent is that true, that they're uh, based on some Japanese textiles? They're not, it's not at all. I would say when, I mean, I don't have, I, I would I admire all Japanese textiles, but when I started weaving, I really was looking towards Annie Albers, and uh, she was a huge, she is a huge hero of mine, and so I spent a lot of time looking at her work and learning how to weave on this four harness loom, which is what she worked on as well. And the, what's really fascinating is you can have infinite possibilities with just the four frames that you can weave, weave through. And so what I was doing, which I really learned from Annie Albers, was these Lino weaves, which is this here, which is where you can pick up the warp and, and weave it through so you have this articulation like that instead of just a flat weave, which is that. It looks like, it looks like you've got weaving, but it's, oh, it's not. It's just the color, with, with it's association, no, it's yeah. Uh, the other question I have is about the weaving that you're passing around here. Oh, yeah. The, the back of it seems, I don't know how it's done. It seems to be, it's all white. Right, because so the, it was the weaving, and there's just a piece of muslin on the back. No, which just, no, I know, I know. That just holds it, that just was, that just keeps it more intact. But, because the, when they, you ink up the weaving, I would put uh, ink on a mylar sheet, and then put the weaving face down, and roll that through the press. So then when you pick up the weaving, the front is the actual plate and the matrix. That's the matrix for a print. Okay, so, so it wasn't blue, blue thread. No, no, no. It's a, the thread, you can see the thread on the back. That's what the actual weaving looked like. And then when you put it, when you put the weaving that's been inked up through the press, that's where you get this. And so the whole sheet would be by uh, like this. It's not just the... Yeah. I heard you mention dice. Yes. And also brick. Yes. So it's, I don't know what that means. It's, it's got nothing to do with weaving. It just I have to do <laughs> yes. You have bring actual dice you play a game with? No, I don't do anything shape. with dice. I just it's just the shape, the geomet the shape of the cube that I that I like. And then the idea of the chance and the variations and its endless possibilities. So but it's, it's a dice. These are yeah, no no, there's nothing to do with dice. These just happen to be what I think the dice would be. So this would be a one. These are the six faces of the dice to me. Mm -hmm. So this would be a one, where this is this Lino weave here, which is a one, and then there's six. And then this would be three, 
here, and then four here, which are the opposite sides of the dice. It's one to six, three to four, and then two to five. There's two, two there, and then five there. That's upside down. And what's a brick? A brick is, it, I was just using it as an example of what I like to, I mean, I'm attracted to bricks. <laughs> <laughs> and so I, but I've done a lot of ceramic bricks. I just made, I just like the shape of a brick. I like the shape of a dice. <laughs> It's a wonky grid that I like to work with. That's it. All right. Least, yeah. Or the wonky grid is that. This is a wonky grid. Yes. yes. Yeah. This is a dice, but though I've also have wonky grid okay. bricks as well. <laughs> <laughs> no, it doesn't make any sense. It's just ha it just happens to be what I want. No, it makes sense now. Oh, okay. I'm not. <laughs> if you could be in my head, you would understand. Uh, <laughs> Very logical to the artist, right? And that, and, and it, 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 that's that's exactly right. So I could also, I think, I mean, these are the beginning of a process, and I don't think they are. They don't scream dice unless that's explained. But I would love you know, the idea is to pull it further, and then you will find a dice. But maybe that's not as interesting. Maybe just having these weavings with all the different lines are interesting. Oh, I think it's very interesting. Yeah. It's just hard no, to I just. Hard to see. Yeah. yeah. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Well, the a lot of these I have lots of small squares where we would just scatter them on the on the page, and then it would have this random dice feel with their they had dots and stuff. So they would be much more <coughs> obvious. Yeah. The dots do it. The dots do it. This <laughs> the lines don't. The lines don't. But to me, they're quite beautiful, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> or you can still count them. I'm interested if you knew that the difference of the material from the cotton to the wool, if, if that would actually work, do work in this way when you printed it. No, that was what was most fascinating. So when I was really disappointed by the actual readings, I didn't know what to do with them, but wanted to pursue it. When I put them through Genesis Press, the reaction to the cotton and the wools was what made, which what articulated the numbers and the, the depth to me. So that was a fascinating, that was a, a magical moment. And now, what I really love, like having worked on these, is whatever I make, I've been doing lots of clothing, some of you put more clothing, is I always keep in mind how it will react with the press. So all of the making now, I think like, I, I want to put through the press because it flattens it and, and the details of the big shows is so much more exciting to me than the actual model. So, in some ways, learning, uh, doing this experience has changed your weaving. Totally, changed everything I made, yes. But that's, a, that, that's why I was sort of thrilled with this experience, the beginning of something that I have years and years and years to figure out. But that's why, and that's, what, that's why, because this printing process and the weaving process, it's all these crafts that are from the beginning of time. But you can still keep inventing new ways to use them, which is what is craft and art is the best for. <laughs> yes, <laughs> or the confluence of craft and art. Yeah. Louise, um, <clears throat> could you go back to the beginning of the printing thing slower? Yes, I can. So <laughs> exactly. I can figure this out. I would show you I, the I video in my head. I understand yes. weaving and then inking your right. pieces. But I don't understand how you got the blue in the back right now. So the, it would be on a, the, this is the, it's a standard size, and the mylar, the piece of mylar that I picked up was this size as well. So, uh, so the, mylar's the, inked. the mylar's inked and the weaving's inked. So it's a mylar inked and printed, and then the weaving's put on top when, and reprinted, or? No, I, all one thing. I, it's all, well, no, it's it's actually several processes. So the, I to ink the weavings, I put it face down on the plate that's inked up, on the and that goes plate. on the mylar plate. And then the first pull off the print from that is the ghost image of this. So you only have the outline, embossed outline, and the blue plate, which is something that, which is another it's so beautiful that that doesn't really work for me. But I think anyway, it's pretty though. And then I leave the mylar sheet that's still printed, that's still inked up, and put the weaving face up and roll that through the press. And ink that. It's not, no, the ink comes from at the first roll on the mylar. So if I ink up the mylar like this, and then I put the weaving face down, I roll that through the press. And that's just inking up, that is not a piece, that's just inking 
tighten up the weaving. And then the next thing is I flip the weaving like that and roll it again through the press, and that's what you, and then put the paper on top of that. So that's how you get this image. And the more you roll through the fake, the it gets more and more faded than when you make it. Right. But they're actually everything. Everything works. I mean, a uh, lithography press is a magical instrument. Which press? The lithro the big lithography uh -huh. press. So it's one of those. Is it a white set press or is it a lithography press? Yeah. So it's, it's like the one. It's like a huge version of the press. Yeah. That's not a lithography press. That's lithography, right? Yeah. No, well, that's it. Yeah. Oh. Oh, it offsets where the roller is separate from the no, plate. The yeah. Okay, well then I guess I always thought it was a little press. Yeah. That's what it's called. Yeah. But it could be anything. I mean, this is the other part of craft, which is you can just do a little bit and you still get a lot of results. Yeah. So I'm really not a master printmaker. Luckily, Janice is an incredible printmaker. So I leave the pressure, the rollers, the ink to her. Ask whatever I can roll through the press. So the first pass leaves a ghost image. The ghost image, yes. Where the uninked weaving has sat on the inked model. Yeah. And then you flip the weaving over yes. and run it through again. And that's when you, then it picks up all the details from the inked piece of weaving that was face down on the And why is in the back of the pieces of weaving? It doesn't sink through. It just is. So where is one? So it's the weaving originally, I would bring the stock weaving look like this. And then I just have this just these muslins on the back for because it's easier to move around on the press. So then it would be inked, this is the exact point. It would be inked like this, and that's what I would and that's it. so the ghost image would look like that. But, that would be inked plus the whole mylar sheet. Yeah, and what's the only thing that really works well with this one is since this is uh, since there's heavy pressure, the white square is all lost with the details, which is really beautiful. Yeah. And then I would flip it like this. So then I put the so this would be inked up, and I put the the sheet on top of that and roll it through the press. Hmm. But it wouldn't match. They're mono prints, so they match it. The, each one's unique. I mean, it looks like it matches, which yeah. is kind of, it does match. What do you mean it doesn't match? Well, because it's you're it's turning it's it's Oh, it's right, it's but that's, but the printing process is always in reverse end. Yes. Um, I'm, I'm, so the ghosting over here, or is it the middle one? And is that from Muslim? So that bit there, yes, yeah. Oh, it seems, what is that? Is, is that a third print? Is that a lesser print or is it goes to this? That's just a piece of string hanging from No, no, not the string. It's sort of shattering here. That's just the, that's just has to do with the pressure of the press and that this is raised and this is raised. Yeah, and it's above. See, above. It's just the pressure of the press pressure and pressure. how it hits and the. And that's the first pull? This probably is a first pull. I don't, you know. I actually don't keep track. I, I should, but I don't keep yeah. track of how many. It's just really <laughs> when it gets fade, too faded, then we ain't get on and start over. It'd be interesting which one, like how many artist prints you pull, how many printed prints you pull, and this is that would be interesting if I was. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I really I'm just, I'm just, just put, yeah, so yeah. I just yes, I just put them through the press, and, and oh, I know yeah. they're all in unique because yeah. we can switch them around. And all right. I mean that's what makes a modern print is that it, there is a repetition. It Two is. Set from the <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm curious. Usually when we leave. Uh, we're very careful to select colors and design, and that's the precious part of what we're doing. I was wondering if you had planned ahead that you were going to be inking the surface of your weaving? These ones, no. That was, this is the first time I did them. So, so the weaving was your start. You had intended to do a weaving with the colors and the design. What occurred to you to, to ink it? That, that was, the, I had already worked on print projects with Janice Stemmerman before. So when these seemed to me completely flat and unexciting, I brought them to Janice's studio and said, well, they're already of waste, so I might as well ink them up and put them through the press. And then I said, oh, now they're down. So the actual art piece becomes the matrix for the final piece. 
which is a and to me it's the, the multi layers is, is really yeah. exciting. These are the things that I love. <laughs> Oh no, it's a, oh, yeah, why the blue and originally it, it just I have them in stock. They're beautiful. Yeah, yeah. I've got them. Come on, man. <laughs> <laughs> There's stacks and stacks and stuff. <laughs> yeah. And the and the PR that went out on you, um, there was mention of your interest in politics. Oh, right. Would you talk about that a little bit? I think so um, some of the reason why dice came up is in the past, the past presidency, and it's this chance and the luck of the dice and all these like tremendously tragic things. That the idea of variation and chance was what. So I brought the dice to that. It's where I think I found the dice and this whole idea of games and it's all uh, just people moving parts and playing and moving pieces around randomly. It seemed to me, and then I started on back. I went down to back. Uh, and it seems it's not really political. I mean, I, I made a lot of political art with a group of women. Janice is one of them, and that and that doesn't have anything to do with dice, but we do print a lot. <laughs> but it is uh, the idea of chance and, and how it is kind of a crapshoot at this point. Mm -hmm. Or it was. It felt more like a crapshoot. Now I feel like we're have more uh, war on hand. But at the beginning, it felt like a crapshoot <coughs> when I was making the dice. <laughs> Yeah. And had you ever considered making a sculpture out of the squares that was a six-sided? I've done. I've tried. Thing. I've tried that. The, it doesn't. The um, I, I make. I've made a lot of ceramic dice with different slabs, and, and they sort of fall apart in the kiln, so they look wonky. I have a ton of those too. If you want, <laughs> <laughs> I'll take one. Yeah. <laughs> now, come by down the street. Just come. Yeah. Louise, you have a real interest in games, and I think the dice may also sort of come out of that. I, it's, you know, less an interest, I don't really play games, it's not so much an interest in games, it's the, the grids of games that I made out of. I think uh, I would feel comfortable making something out of any kind of grids. So the dice has a grid, and if you flatten the dice, there's 13 different ways you can can make them in sort of a folded paper way. Like those kinds of grids I find really exciting. And I have lots of moving and prints of those. I mean, some of them look like robots or crosses, or it's, it gets very weird. But there, there is something about, I mean, it's very interesting to think dice is a game of chance. Obviously, this, this experiment was a game of chance. Yeah. And um, so as you move forward with this, what are the things that you're looking for, or what are most exciting for you? Um, well, I think uh, the, the idea of chance in the tables and how, it, how things fall together. I mean, my biggest pitfall in working with materials is sometimes the materials are already good enough. Like, or not good enough, already there, it's already beautiful. Like, what would I do? Like, I can have many moments working where I'm like, oh, that's done, it just did it itself. And then I have to sort of keep it going forward so it's my own work. But I think that chance and that, uh, that sense of it, it's sort of a game playing with materials and my will and their will. And uh, like with ceramics on weaving and the printing press, there's a lot of unknowns that you can't control. So it is a collaboration with the materials, with the people who know how to do stuff, everything. So I guess that, that game in making is really keeps my mind. One thing that I was uh, struck with um, when you pass around the, the actual things, there's a, as you even said, they're less interesting. Yeah. Right? So there's the original concept of making this thing that doesn't fully realize itself. And then you find a process that is transformative in which the transformation becomes exactly. more interesting. It, it's, a, it's an interesting uh, metaphor for a kind of uh, evolutionary life progression. Absolutely, or something it's like, like any that. kind of recipe or anything. It's, like, it's how, we, how our, we live our daily lives, where it's always a work in progress. Yeah. And in yeah. the process of evolving, the original is 
destroy. Right. Or, or made yeah, no, because you know, if the original is no good, then yeah. you don't need it anymore. So it's fine. I mean, I think these look much prettier as objects with ink on them, mm -hmm. flattened, mm -hmm. than they did as properly. Yeah. No. Yeah. But I still don't think, I think this is really the work. This it's is not the final manifestation. Yeah. 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 I've, I've, it's, it's a good only in the show, but we haven't had that many. But a lot of people have mentioned grids yes. in relation to this show. And I get that a loom is a grid and you know, there's all sorts of things that right. are inherent you can't help it. to yes. these kinds of, a lot of the way that these things are made, the yeah. grids are necessary. But what do you think in a more kind of abstract, spiritual, whatever plane, like what is it about grids? Because I think, you know, when you're talking about loving the chance um, artifacting that happens when you're printing, and that always happens, especially with yeah. mono prints. Um, and, and loving that, obviously, and thanking it for doing part of the work for you when it comes to you. But then there's always the group behind it. So do you think, I mean, what's your relationship? Do you love grids because you hate chaos, and yet when chaos happens, it's satisfying as long as it's in a kind of a controlled environment? I would say exactly, yes. <laughs> I, I do hate chaos, and there's, it, it is a way of um, organizing your work or your thoughts or your mind or the colors or something. It's just a, a really handy matrix to as a to just rely on. But I, just, I don't know, I think and I always react I always love a grid. And then the warp and the weft, like you look around, it's I mean except for Sheila. <laughs> it's pretty much all grid. Yeah. Well Alice maybe but you know there's it's a, it's a lot of grids because mm -hmm. it's uh, the weaving you can't help but use it. Yeah. But I do think it's a way of, of a jumping off point, like a, like the way I like a brick or a dice. It's just a jumping off point where I don't have to invent something new and I can just work within that. And it's, to me it's interesting to have a ceramic brick and then try and make it in a different material. It's just, I think I really like working in materials. So to have a standard set grid mm -hmm. is an easy like coat hanger. To yeah. like hang what I like to do on. So you can allow sensuous, yes. chancy. Anything, yes. And when it starts to get too wonky, you can like roll it back in. Yeah. Yeah. So I do think, I think it's just a practical, uh, easy way to work for me. I was just, but I, mean, I was thinking like, I think there's a psychological component so. yeah. for, for all people who love grids. I yes. love grid. I love grid. You can ask my husband. <laughs> I, have, I have lots of different ways of organizing things, and it would fit a grid. Everything uh, I has thought to be you were going to say that he's all gridded out. No, no, he's not. <laughs> oh, but I do know that if I park at an angle, <laughs> it's very distressing. <laughs> three days, three days of permutation. Yeah. So it is like I, I, I naturally have a grid. And then fixation. <laughs> One final question I wanted to ask: Having done these, and they're so beautiful, have you thought of doing something that? I mean, like doing a weaving with this color thread. Yeah. Um, I, ha not, I, I think the working backwards, I haven't gotten there yet. I'm still working forwards with, <laughs> Sorry, yeah. No, 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 don't push me. It would be, it would be amazing, because when I'm now working, I can use any color I want, because I, I, I'm pretty much set on doing the one color uh, press pieces. Right, and so then any color, it would just be, get to become one color. So it then gets interesting how the ink reacts and what I'm thinking of color. Well, it's nice that the thallo blue is so rich. Right. But the yarns are so rich too. Yeah, exactly. So, the, yeah. And that, in fact, I'm just about to start a project where I have made all these sheets of fabric with lots of color on them and then we're gonna run them through Janice's press as one color. So who knows what's gonna happen on the back? Mm -hmm. Like it will already, it, the being intimidated by a white blank piece of paper or canvas is now gone because I've ruined a lot of sheets and canvases and muslin. <laughs> and then we'll put them through the press and organize them somehow. So that's the next step. So I haven't gotten to the working backwards from a print back to the fabric. That'll be in 10 years or so. <laughs> It'll be, yeah. But that's a good idea. Keep that time for now. Exactly. <laughs> I've got it. I'll put it in 10 years. <laughs> Perhaps one more question? I was curious. Um, you were mentioning in Boston. Yes. And there doesn't seem to be, I mean, I'm not close enough to go to the top. Yeah, please don't. 
any embossment on those particular prints. So were you using the mylar, you said, as a matrix? Yes, or as a, just to print up things. So were you lifting the, the weavings off the mylar and then printing the mylar? Is that explaining why there's no embossment? Yes, but then when you put the, the embossment only comes when the weaving actually comes through. Right, so the weaving wasn't really, wasn't, this is the result of... This would be the image of the weaving on the mylar. On the mylar. Thanks. And then the yeah. But I could put it again, but, you know, it's headless what you get in the thing. All right, thank you. Luis, thank you. Thank you.